Well, it's been super popular on Netflix lately. Firefly Lane, and it's about a fictional Seattle talk show host. So of course, myself and our staff had to watch. Authors Andrea Dunlop and Geraldine DeRuiter, and New Day executive producer Joseph Sutner, joining me today for Hot Topics. Have you watched the new Netflix series? I know you have, because we are all staying at home watching Netflix series, but have you watched Firefly Lane yet? No, so I haven't, and I think I think if I watch it, I'm going to get super emotional. So this comes up all the time. I don't know if you can see it. This is my this is my King Five ID. Actually, I might be rocking a middle part there. I was gonna say I'm in a middle yeah, part. Going to yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was the. I mean, it was the early 2000s. It was a crazy time. But they mentioned it's about being in journalism in the Northwest, right? I just watched an interview with Katherine Heigl about it. Mm. And I have to say, it made me really confident for this television appearance because she was doing the interview in front of a really weird patterned like shower curtain or something. <laughs> I just thought celebrities, they're just like us. They don't know where the heck to do their Zoom calls from. But no, it looks so good. I have to watch it. I didn't know that it's like based in the Northwest. It looks so fun. Well, when I heard that there was a new show about a talk show in Seattle, I'm like, well, hello, New Day is the only talk show in Washington State. So obviously I need to check this out to like know what's going on. I think I've gone through maybe four episodes and I just always find it so interesting, like how media, like local media is portrayed in TV shows because some of it is like somewhat realistic, but like there's like a scene where like the host and the producer are like backstage, like looking at the different camera shots and they're like, no, you can't take that shot of me. And I'm like, would Amity and I ever be doing that? No. So I mean, you know, I don't know. It's funny, but it's cool that I mean, they mentioned Gene Anderson, King Five legend. It's pretty cool. Seriously, like one of my idols when I was an intern at King Five, and one time we got to wash our hands next to each other <laughs> in the bathroom, and I was so nervous I couldn't talk. So yeah. So I have seen the whole series, and they do mention the Queen, Gene Anderson, multiple times. And so I emailed Gene and I said. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I would love to talk to you about this. And she she's busy doing other stuff, but she said she was so flattered by it. And it just is incredible. And you have so much pride because Jean was not only female on TV at a time that you didn't see a lot of that, but she was the first yeah. and it was King. Dorothy Bullet, she created this. So it's so, it is, there's a lot of pride in the show, but there's also um, a lot of stuff that like Joseph said, isn't exactly how it is behind the scenes. And we're a little more professional than maybe it seems sometimes. All right, so from one television show to another, Frasier. Did y'all watch Frasier back in the day? Yes, yes. loved it. I, I still, I still love watching Frasier. If I can't sleep at oh, night, yeah. boom, Frasier Crane helps me go night night skis. So apparently they're thinking of rebooting this. Uh, what do you think? Is it need a reboot? No, I feel like, and I can't watch, I mean, does anybody else watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like the CEO. Oh, am I the only one? Am I the old, I'm just embarrassing myself with that? No, I'm going to go with it. I watched the Beverly Hills season where Camille Grammer, his wife, was on it. And I mean, she is like, she's a character, I'll say that. But like, he comes off so badly. And I'm just like, oh, he seems like a big jerk. And then you kind of go down the rabbit hole and you're like, oh, I probably didn't want to know what Kelsey Grammer was like in real life. And so now I'm like, I don't know if I can commit back to like, to Frasier, especially because I think the dad has passed away. And it's yeah. just like, you have the original iconic cast. And if they don't get all of them back, I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Are they going to use the same cast, Joseph? Or are they going to get new Frasier? But no, I think he's part of it. But no, I don't he's think on it. He's committed. Yeah. yeah. I don't think all the details are fully sorted out yet, but. I just think like there's so many shows about local media in Seattle. Like what is it just like a trendy thing to like, cause it's about a radio host in Seattle also, which I just think is so That's interesting. True. Although so. it's like such fake Seattle, you know, like the portrayal well, of Seattle on that show. It's like. <laughs> well, yeah, I love his like view of Seattle. Like his apartment must be like somewhere hovering over Belltown. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> or like <laughs> in the, the it's like in Elliott Bay, right? Yeah, Didn't they figure it out? Like, <laughs> I don't know, it'd be interesting to see. I don't know, maybe there's like a storyline of his studio gets torn down by a new building coming up. I don't know. Um, if you could go back in time to a year ago, not pre-pandemic, but when the pandemic started, what would you tell yourself if you could tell yourself one thing? 
I would say lower your expectations on what you can accomplish. An ambitious working mom, Amity, you know, like it's been really it's such a challenge with childcare and balancing everything, like way more even than it than it has been, you know, before that. And so I think that would be my biggest piece of advice to myself is just to cut myself a break. And I, and I probably wouldn't do it anyway. Oh, I'm going to get emotional here, but I think I would tell myself to try and, and reach out and spend a little more time in any way possible with the people I've lost in the last year. Um, yeah. And to lighten it up a little, buy more sweatpants, but, um, yeah. So those two things. Oh, girl. (laughs) I didn't mean to keep it that that serious. So. Yeah, no, it's real. It's real. Joseph? Well, I would say mine is probably like to just believe in yourself. Like if you would have told me a year ago that we would turn New Day into having a new host, doing it all remotely, I would have just like totally laughed at you. Like that's not humanly or physically possible, but we did it. Here we are. I mean, the show is still going. Like we are somehow finding ways to talk to all these amazing people, just like everyone on this panel today all from our own homes. It's still fun to watch. We're still representing the Northwest. You know, it's great. I mean, it could be better, but you know. (laughs) It can always be better, right? Well, we're gonna have more with our panel later in the show, like why millennials and Gen Z are fighting so much and why uh, Gen X just seems to not care. Now, before we go, we had one last conversation over why there seems to be so much tension between generations right now. Geraldine, Andrea, and producer Joseph are back. Geraldine's firestorm she started on Twitter today about the whole millennial Gen Z battle. So we've talked about this before on New Day. We were talking about the side parts and skinny jeans and how that means you're old. Girl. (laughs) So why, but why are people so fired up about the difference between the two? I wanted to pull myself out of this debate as soon as possible. And I managed to do that on a technicality, which is I get to play the Gen X card. And someone said, hey, you know how you know if you're Gen X, you don't care. (laughs) And the way that I know is that if you are putting on pants for me, that is an achievement yes. enough at this point. I am an elder millennial. Yeah. I was born in 1982. So I really like, you know, remember when the internet came into our lives. I remember things like landlines. I remember when I got my first cell phone. It's like all those generational markers. I feel like, you know, I'm more of a like cusp Gen X person. But yes, as the question of pants, I mean, I'm wearing sweatpants, right? I'm like dressed from the top up, you know, and I got my Zoom professional going on. I um, appreciate that. But, you know, it, it does kind of make me laugh because I just think back to myself in my 20s and whether I ever cared about what people in their 30s or 40s were wearing. And I don't think I did, but I think it's just everyone's bored and they're picking fights with each other online right now. And I really feel for, for Gen Z, you know, like they're in their 20s right now. They're missing like a whole year of their 20s. I, that has to suck. They're supposed to be dancing on tables and like making out with strangers. Well, I just think it's so weird how hung up people get on these generational labels. Like, I understand wanting to like, capture, like, the zeitgeist of a season for people. Like, that's, like, a, something that people, like, relate to each other with. But it's, like, I always see, because like, I'm obviously a millennial. I was born in 1988. And people are always like, oh, if you're Gen X and you remember, like, recording songs off the radio with your cassette player. I'm like, well, I'm a millennial. I definitely remember doing that, like, in the 90s. For me, millennials are all about, like... When you're in high school, like you had a cell phone, but you didn't like have social media. If you feel any sort of like that emotion, like you're probably a millennial, right? I I will, however, say to the point of when when I was in my 20s, I didn't really express that what people who were older were wearing was kind of maybe old. But I might have thought it (laughs) might have been like, mom, no, but it's all good. It's all good. All right. So I just want to point out for the record, I am, I don't even know if it's a side part, but I don't care. Side parts forever, my friends. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. If you have any ideas you'd like to share or you want to see something on the show that you haven't seen before, just find us on social media. We're on all the interwebs. And if there's some segment that you perhaps missed on the show today that you'd like to see again, like perhaps you missed our yummy cooking segment. Well, don't fear. Just go to NewDayNorthwest.com. We've got everything there you'll ever need to know about our show. 
We look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you have yourself a great day.